Y'all, we're making cinnamon rolls. Come on. Welcome to Highfalutin Low Carb, the random web series where we find and test the best low carb recipes this crazy internet has to offer. Today, we're tackling cinnamon rolls. Stay tuned. All right, so screw them all food court. We're making our own cinnamon rolls today. Um, apparently it can be done and we're testing a couple of uh, very popular recipes. If you're new here, that's what we do on this channel. We test uh, the most popular recipes for low carb and keto food and determine which is the best. So if that's something that's interest you, uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Otherwise, uh, let's get started. The first one is uh, keto cinnamon rolls and this is by our good friend Lisa at uh, Low Carb Yum. Now, if you watched our bagel battle video that was just a few months ago, um, the bagel that won was a fathead dough, but it was made out of coconut flour instead of almond flour, and it surprised me so much. Mainly because in the, in the bagel recipe, it was very savory, it was not terribly sweet. And um, I can sort of detect that coconut you know, flavor a little bit in, in savory goods especially. But uh, she commented on our video and in, in, in the uh, comments below she said, um, wow, thanks for featuring me. You also should try this as cinnamon roll dough. Now I gotta just be honest with you, the cinnamon roll battle is perhaps the top three most requested battles for my channel. Uh, I mean, I probably have had 200 comments, people saying, I wanna hear about cinnamon rolls. So that's what we're doing today. We're doing fathead keto cinnamon rolls by Low Carb Yum, uh, because we gotta try the fathead dough. I mean, right, there's a reason it is so popular in the keto world, because it's pretty good. You know, it's hard to believe that something made out of mozzarella cheese tastes like bread, but it does, um, pretty, pretty much. So the second one is um, not fathead dough related, and that was our other, you know, I could have, if you look up cinnamon roll dough, low carb cinnamon roll dough, keto cinnamon roll dough, a lot of it's fathead based, a lot of it. And, um, and there's probably a good reason for that. But the second one is called gluten-free low carb and keto cinnamon roll knots. Um, by nomnom.com, G-N-O-M-G-N-O-M.com, nomnom, that's a cute thing. Uh, so hers is not based on this. It's some other things, almond flour, coconut flour, there's xanthan gum, uh, just um, you, you, you knead the dough, you let it rest. It feels a lot like traditional wheat dough cinnamon rolls, so we're gonna find out, all right? So we're starting with uh, keto cinnamon rolls with uh, coconut fat head dough by Low Carb Yum. Come along. All right, so we've already got our ingredients prepped and measured and ready to go. And I'm gonna tell you now, um, her instructions say this, and I agree, uh, measure it, weigh it. Um, don't go by uh, uh, volume me measurements, a cheap little scale, my Ozeri scale. You hear me say it all the time. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna start with the coconut flour and get all of our dry ingredients in, in, um, going together. And what's the one thing I always say? <laughs> Sift, guys, sift. So here is our coconut flour. We are going to add to that uh, baking powder, and this is a fair amount of baking powder. Like that's that's a lot of baking powder in comparison to most other recipes. Uh, but uh, that's where we're gonna get our lift. And then you're also gonna add some granulated alternative sweetener. This is Swerve. Put all this in a sifter and just make sure you get all the lumps and bumps out of this. Cause you see, you know, it always leaves something behind and that'd just be all up in your business while you're just trying to cook. So, okay, so let's set our dry stuff uh, to the side. We just needed to incorporate those. And from here, we're going to tackle what is fathead dough, the base of the fathead dough, the mozzarella cheese. We've got shredded mozzarella cheese. And yeah, I use a bag of shredded mozzarella. Um, I do, I, and I know that it's very unpopular, but I do. Convenience sometimes wins out. Convenience sometimes wins out. And the first thing everybody's gonna say, well, there's potato starch in there. There's all kinds of starches in that thing. Well, yeah, there are. Uh, there's probably an eighth of a teaspoon or a quarter of a teaspoon in the whole four cut bag of a tiny little bit of starch that is still accounted for in the macros. It's not just magically in there and you gotta account for it. So if you don't like using bag shredded cheese, don't. But I'll tell you what, it makes some good fathead dough. I'm just telling you. I use shredded, usually the craft, but it has to say part skim, 
low moisture has to be those. So in a, a large bowl, we've got that and we've got our cream cheese. Now, again, on this channel, I, I, I say it all the time and I know you're tired of hearing me say it if you're regular here. I don't often give exact measurements for the recipes we're testing. This is not my work. I didn't create these recipes. I'm just here to test them. The people that did do the hard work for this deserve the traffic for it. So all of the recipes that you're gonna see are gonna be listed right down here below in the, uh, on the screen and in the video description below. Click show more or click the arrow below the video it'll expand and show you links to all of these recipes where it's super easy to get them and print them out so that's why sometimes you don't see exact measurements on my channel those of you who know me and have been around here for a while know that so um, if you're new here hi I talk a lot so um, we're gonna throw this in the microwave this goes in the microwave for a minute stir it goes in for another minute stir it and I'll be meet you right back here to put all this together and create a uh, fathead dough so see you here in just a minute Okay, so we're back now, and this is where you've got to move pretty quickly. I mean, it's not of dire consequence, but this is our mozzarella cheese and our cream cheese that have been melted in the microwave. It takes exactly two minutes on my microwave. And now we've got to add a couple of things to this. Number one is, uh, let's go ahead and put in some melted butter. This is, make sure it's unsalted. We're not making savory goods today. We're making sweet goods. So uh, unsalted butter lets you control that amount of flavor and savoriness. And to that, um, three beaten eggs, three beaten eggs. And this is where our dry mixture comes right in here. And now you've just got to, um, you just got to work on this and make this into dough. So as I mentioned in that, um, as I mentioned in that, uh, oh my God, what in the world? literally all over me as I as I mentioned in um, the uh, battle of the bagels what makes fathead dough so great is that it it doesn't taste like mozzarella cheese even though it's made out of mozzarella cheese as the base it really doesn't taste like cheese but the secret to that is it has to has to be mixed well there cannot be pieces of um, cheese and mixed in with uh, dry flour that gets makes you cheesy bread and we are not doing that we're making dough for a bread so you just got to work on this and get it incorporated okay if you get like this and you need um, it, it gets a little stiff on you put it back in the microwave for 20 seconds come right back and, and um, keep keep mixing All right, so that looks good. Now I'm gonna put this aside and here's what we're gonna do. We gotta roll this out, this piece of parchment. We gotta roll this booger out into um, a, a rectangle of nine by 12 inches. Okay, hold on. Okay, so we're gonna get this ready to put in. Um, we're gonna use a nine by 13 pan greased, she specifically says. And let's go in with another piece of parchment. And we gotta get this booger to a rectangle of nine by 12 inches. And a rolling pin is gonna help. Okay. Um, and you kinda do want it square because we're gonna roll this up sort of like a jelly roll. You've, you've seen people take a cooked cake and make a jelly roll out of it, right? And it, those square edges really make a a nice um a nice edge so that's what we're looking for here but let me let's just get a general idea of what stay right there um okay so we need nine but that's tw that's about 11 and a half about nine and a half so we don't need it that that large so we just got to make this into a square Sometimes for me, instead of an actual rolling pin, it helps to use just a dowel like this. And uh, on a parchment, this is so, now regular dough would not be as forgiving because gluten obviously makes it right snap back. That's what makes gluten so magical and make all these beautiful breads. But we don't have gluten in here, so you can sort of just kind of manipulate this how you need to.
All right, now let's see what we've got. Obviously we need a topping on this, right? Or not a topping, a filling inside of this. We gotta put all the cinnamon and the stuff that goes in the cinnamon roll. I'm telling you now that this looks thicker than I was expecting it to be. This is the first time I've made this recipe. Um, I mean, I've made fathead dough millions of times, but it's the first time I've made cinnamon roll dough. So that's 12 inches by nine. I mean, dude, I'm right on the measurements she's given us. All right, so we're gonna make the filling, but first we need to uh, grease a um, nine by 13 casserole. She used a metal pan. I, my oven sort of sometimes gets, um, I sort of uh, get too brown of a bottom on the, um, when I use a metal pan. So we're just gonna put a little butter in a glass casserole, nine by 13, get the sides good. God, the worst thing you could do would be for all that stick. I think you're making cinnamon rolls and you just burned it all up to the glass pan. And uh, okay, you know, this is a purple pan. Don't get on to me about this. This is not a dirty pan, this is a purple pan. Back off. Okay, so we're gonna make the filling now. And the one thing that we know that this obviously has in it is brown sugar and cinnamon. This is um, sucrine gold uh, swerve also makes one. This is a brown sugar substitute. It's a granulated brown sugar uh, erythritol based uh, artificial sweetener. It is probably one of my favorite all time artificial, or it's not artificial, it, alternative, I guess I should say. It's my favorite alternative sweetener. Um, it just has so much flavor. So in that, we're going to add some cinnamon and we just combine that. So hold on. Cinnamon, brown sugar in air quotes. And we would just sprinkle this on. Now she also has an optional step, which I'm gonna take because it looks pretty good. Um, she takes three tablespoons of uh, softened butter and spreads it right on top of this dough. All over, the, God, gosh, that looks good. Doesn't that look good? I feel like I'm icing a cake with butter. Oh, looks super great. We got our butter spread and now, get off there. We're gonna sprinkle on our cinnamon sugar mixture. Let's see what happens. Oh, it smells so good in here already. Nothing is even baking, but gosh, it smells good. This is like a big old pop tart. Um, I'll be honest, uh, I haven't made a lot of cinnamon rolls in my life. To me, cinnamon rolls come out of a, um, one of those exploding cans <laughs> in the refrigerated section <laughs> that you pop. And uh, you, you've got some dough stuff in there. I don't know if it's really dough, whatever it is, but um, that's what cinnamon rolls were to me. We, I never really made homemade cinnamon rolls. This is a lot of cinnamon sugar, my goodness. Like it feels a little bit excessive, Lisa. You sure, sugar booger? Because this looks like a lot. All right, leave no spaces untouched with the cinnamon and sugar. And here's where we're gonna roll this up, make cinnamon rolls, so hang on. All right, so now we have to make this into a cinnamon roll and she says that we just really just roll this up starting at the um, small end and we're gonna roll it. Please, good gravy, please let it come off of this parchment. Oh yeah, she's pretty. So we roll this up, now don't, don't prove me wrong. Just be gentle. This is not, this dough does not have flour in it. It does not have gluten in it. I mean, it's got coconut flour, but it's not wheat flour that is sort of resilient. So you've got to be gentle, but I mean, it's not crazy. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. If, you, if you're leaving some behind like that, just scoot it up on there. I mean, we got two tablespoons of baking powder and this thing's gonna rise to the ceiling. I hope. Ooh, it's so pretty. Okay, once you get your roll, come on now, don't loosen up on me. Y'all. 
get off of there. Okay. Here we have it. Ba -ba -ba -ba. That is beautiful and thick. So let me wash my hands and get a, get a knife. Hold on. Okay, so we've already got our greased pan over here and we're supposed to get 12 of these out of here, right? So that's how many servings and how many rolls she said. Let's look at them. Oh, that looks like a cinnamon roll, y'all. Kind of look at that. That looks like a cinnamon roll. Oh, goodness gracious. All right, one, two, three. So these go in the oven for uh, on 400 for how long? Uh, 14 to 16 minutes and we're gonna cool them. While they're baking, we're gonna make quickly uh, the icing, the cinnamon roll icing, uh, the most important part. Who wants a cinnamon roll without the white stuff on top? So wash up, putting this in the oven. I'll meet you right back here. Y'all, I'm so mad my camera went out before I got these in the oven. I mean, they've been in there for five minutes, but I wanted to show you the overhead shot of what these looked like. While I was doing them, you couldn't see them. Ugh. Technical difficulties in the first recipe does not bode well for the rest of this episode. These are going in the oven. I'll meet you back here. Oh my gosh, y'all. Okay, so they did rise. They did spread. They just come out of the oven. They're scalding hot. Wouldn't dare touch them now. I'm preparing for the next recipe and we're about to get our, fill, our topping for these ready, but I had to show you that. I mean, come on here. So, all right, on to the topping. It's softened butter. It's softened cream cheese. And to that, we are obviously going to add vanilla. And we just gotta cream these together. And then we're gonna add some powdered, uh, this erythritol sweetener or swerve sweetener, whatever you use that's powdered, uh, like a confectioner sugar uh, substitute, that's what we're using here. But we're gonna cream this and make, um, make a cinnamon roll glaze. Add our sweetener to that. Okay, so these are still pretty warm. Um, truth be told, I probably should let them, oh gosh, I let them cool down a little bit, but he's gonna put a little dab of icing on each one. Oh my gosh, y'all. This, this almost feels like I'm being bad, like I'm doing something wrong here. This looks so amazing. Okay, I'll meet you back here. We're starting again in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, we're back. Uh, the cinnamon rolls are cooling. We've set up for the next recipe. So nomnom.com, this is gluten-free, low-carb, and keto cinnamon roll knots. And this is the one that um, is uh, not based on fathead, though. And her, she said, you got 30 minutes and you're craving cinnamon rolls? Yeah. Uh, whip up these easy and scrumptious cinnamon roll knots in a jiffy. So the way we're going to start this is in a food processor. We're going to build our dough in that, and then it has to rest for 10 minutes. We're going to knead it and let it rest. So let's get started with this. This is almond flour. And even though this is going in this food processor, you've still got to sift it. So to this, um, while we're sifting, we're going to add in our uh, baking powder. Um, and this is what um, was not in the other recipe. This is xanthan gum. And this gives a nice bready texture to um, low carb breads. It sort of acts acts as a gluten replacement, kind of, okay? So um, if you want to find out how much, again, check the recipe down below. Um, but that goes in. And then also coconut flour. This is almond flour and coconut flour. So it's one of each. So I'm really anxious to see what this brings us with all of these different, um, different flour options. So just... Make sure this is, look at that. Look at those big old things in there. Mm -mm. No, sir. No, sir. Bust him up. Bust them up. Uh, while I'm sitting here doing this, I wanted to mention to you, if you followed me for any length of time, you know that um, the last time we saw each other, I was talking about going on the trip of a lifetime and going on a sailboat in the middle of the British Virgin Islands. And that I was going to bring you back some um, some video footage and for you to check out. Well, I did. Uh, I'm not going to put it on this channel though. Um, I just want to leave this for cooking and low carb stuff. But um, if you're interested in that at all, uh, and you want to see what we did with my friends and 
in the British Virgin Islands and a beautiful fun trip. Uh, be sure to check out my personal channel. It's just West Shoemaker uh, here on YouTube. And I'm gonna leave a link up here. Um, I'll put it, I think it's over here. And I'll put a link also in the video description. If, if that interests you, go over there and subscribe to my other channel. Um, we just, it's just sort of like everyday life stuff and some things that I wanna talk to you about that I don't wanna clog up this channel with uh, because I already do enough chatty chatty here. Uh, but if that interests you, go check me out. It's Wes Shoemaker over uh, on, on YouTube. Subscribe to me there. This goes right into a food processor. So our beautifully sifted flour, right, is ready to go. Just combine this good. Now, this is, while this is running, we're gonna turn the food processor on and we're gonna add um, the egg, uh, beaten egg, which we know. And then another unusual ingredient that I'm not sure why it's there, but we're gonna find out, um, a little bit of apple cider vinegar, a couple of teaspoons of that. So we're gonna do that now. It also calls for up to five tablespoons of water as needed to make this into a ball. So we're gonna run this until we get a dough ball and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so um, I may have added a pinch too much water to this. The dough should form a ball, a real sticky ball. Uh, and I think I've got a little bit too much water in it, but I think we're gonna be fine. But what you do from here now, this has gotta be kneaded and then we're gonna let it rest. And so we put it in a piece of cling wrap film and uh, knead it and then let it rest. So let's just get this thing out of here and see what we're working with. Oh, cling wrap is such an aggravating thing. So. Said it should be sticky, and boy, I do believe it is. Right there it goes. Oh, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Ain't nothing wrong with that dough. Careful, you will cut your leg off with this thing right here. Whoo, put that away. And we're gonna knead it for a few minutes. I just want it in another piece, because in case I get rambunctious with kneading it, I don't want it to bust out of there. So it literally says, I'm gonna read you her directions exactly. She says, wrap the dough in cling film and knead it through the plastic for a minute or two. Now, when I read something like that, I'm like, okay, well that's enough, that's a minute or two. But I think she really means like 60 seconds or, or more. So I'm gonna knead this in a plastic for a minute or two. She said, think of it a bit like a stress ball. So I, Lord, I need that. Um, Allow the dough to rest for 10 minutes and up to five days in the fridge. So I'm gonna sit here and rub on this for 60 more seconds. So between two pieces of parchment paper, we gotta get this ball of dough into, rolled out into a 10 by 10 inch square. And um, I think square is pretty important here because these are knots, they're not rolls. It's sort of like a roll, but you're gonna see why it's just a, you know, basically semantics here, but um, there is a little bit of a difference. So before I get my hands messy, bleh, which I just did, hold on. Between two pieces of parchment paper, we gotta get this to 10 inches. Let's start with that. There we go, we're done. No, I'm kidding. Um, let's see what we're aiming for. Okay, 10 inches by 10 inches, square. Keep measuring. I should have a ki kitchen. <laughs> Measuring tape, it's probably got sawdust all over it. <laughs> all right, we gotta get 10 of these things out of here. here so here's our um, parchment paper on a baking sheet, because these are knots, right? We're gonna roll them sort of like garlic bread knots. But to this, we are going to make our cinnamon sugar mixture. So we're gonna use regular granulated swerve and some cinnamon. If you wanna know how much, check out her recipe. It's gonna be written right here and down below. And Combine these. Take some melted butter and gently brush the top of this. Oh, it smells so good in here. Uh, it's all I can do not to just tear down the ones that are on the back burner right there because the smell's so darn good. And then you get all this cinnamon and butter going and this is a lot gosh this is a lot for such a small little thing but okay a 
Like, that's a lot, a lot, a lot. I feel like. Chew. Okay, that was, a, I felt like that was a lot, but it looks good. So from here, what we're gonna do is fold this in half and then cut 10 strips, because there's 10 servings in this, and roll them up and put them on our pan. So do not judge me, but we're gonna do this together, okay? So <clears throat> let's start from here. Pick this up. Hold on, I'm gonna try to pat, well, I'm just making a mess. I feel like, see what's happening as I, as I pick it up, all the powder's going right to the middle of my dough. So there we have it. That's what it said to do. So we gotta get 10 out of here because there's 10 servings. Uh, easiest way to do that that I know of is cut it in half. We gotta get five out of each, so. So, hmm, I'm nervous about this because I feel like all the goo is coming out. So let's pick up one. Yeah, see like there's so much just un, and it says twist it. Look how much is falling out and then roll it. God, Lord, nah, yeah. And do that with it. <laughs> That's the way hers look on the picture, I promise. <laughs> So roll it, pinch together. They are very delicate. The dough is more delicate than, than the fat head dough. So don't come at it all ham fisted like I'm doing. Try a little, be a little more delicate. In these go into the oven for um, how long? Oh, this is the one there, eight to 10, eight, sorry, eight to 12 minutes. She specifically says in parentheses, we do um, 10 minutes. The whole point here is that these, you wanna cook them till they're soft. If you cook them too long, she said they're gonna become cookies. And while t tasty, they do not taste like cinnamon rolls. She also gives the caveat that these are better the minute they come out of the oven. So these are gonna go in the oven. I'm gonna wash my hands while they're cooking. We're gonna get the little bit of um, topping done, the icing, and then uh, when they come out, we're gonna ice them and taste this one and the other one. So meet me back here with clean hands in just a few minutes. See you in a bit. All right, guys, so these are out of the oven. I left them in for 11 minutes. Um, she said 10, <sighs> we're pretty close here. So just so we know, we know where we're at before we even get here. These are the gluten-free, low-carbon keto cinnamon roll knots by nomnom.com. One of these, if you make 10 of them, one of them is 102 calories. It's about eight grams of fat, three uh, total carbs. You got one gram of fiber, so that means you've got two net carbs per knot, and protein's about three grams. So not bad at all. But when you look at the size of those to these, I mean, I haven't tasted them yet, but I mean, hello. Um, these are keto cinnamon rolls uh, by Low Carb Yum, made with coconut fat head dough. And she made 12 of these. If you make 12, one of them is 209 calories. You've got four carbs, you've got seven grams of protein and 17 grams of fat. Fiber, you got one gram of fiber. So that makes these uh, three net carbs for the uh, Low Carb Yum and two net carbs for the uh, nomnom.com. So let's just taste these, right? I wanna see what this is about. So let's get one of these out of here, the one that looks more like a traditional cinnamon roll. That's beautiful, to be honest. It is super pretty. It's thinner than I thought it would be, but it's pretty. And if you look at the bottom of it, it looks like a cinnamon roll. So let's taste it. I, now that I've covered in icing, hold on. Wow. Wow. Mm. Yet again, fat head dough totally surprises me. Coconut fat head dough, if you were to tell if you were to serve that to somebody on the street and tell them that was made out of coconut and mozzarella cheese they would call you a crazy person. That does not taste like mozzarella cheese or 
coconut. It tastes like a cinnamon roll. That, that is fantastic. I could eat the whole pan. All right, so let's get one of these and let's drizzle him with, with our, ooh. So you do a little like beauty drizzle, right? That's what I'm gonna do. Let's try one of these now. This, if we had thrown it back in the, like heated it up in the oven or the microwave for just 10 seconds, it got it just nice and warm again. It probably would have been even better, but it's gonna be hard to beat that. But these little rolls look good and they smell good. So let's pick one up. It's pretty, um, the bottom side of it. Look at all that ooey gooey cinnamon sugar rolling out of there. Um, I'm surprised that the firmness of it, it is, it does have a little bit of a crunch. I mean, listen, you can sort of hear that if I put it up to my microwave, micro, my microwave, my microphone. Mmm. 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 Oh. Y'all, this is a head-to-head. -head. This is a head-to-head -head battle. I don't know which one's better. Mm. Those are both fantastic. I can I can't, I don't know that I can choose one. I literally do not know that I can choose one. In my brain, but if I'm looking at them, I'm going to pick this one, the, not, the low carb yum ones that are made with fat head day because they're bigger. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, I can get more with that because, you know, if you've got portion size control issues, that's the way your brain works. I'd rather eat a bunch than, of good than a little bit of good. These are really good. You can sort of taste, um, you can sort of feel the texture of the xanthan gum. You feel what that's doing for the bread. It kind of leaves a little bit, I mean, now that it's over with, a very, very, very slight, I don't want to say sliminess because that sounds off-putting and it's not slimy at all, um, but you do feel what the xanthan gum is doing. Okay. I mean, by an inch, by pee pie hair, I'm going to say the low-carb yum fat head dough. It had the most bread-like texture to me. And I'm gonna tell you this too. Now, if you've watched my bread battle video, I'm gonna link it up here. What did I do at the end? My, my MVP is what I called it. Do you remember when I added a packet of yeast to the bread? Now, it was only for flavoring. Yeast, you know, if you don't have gluten in a bread, yeast can't really do much to help rise because there's no gluten for it to make, for the gas, to trap the gas bubbles, right? So um, when we did the bread, I was, you know, concerned about the eggy flavor and we wound up making it in, uh, an improvement on that by adding a little packet of instant yeast to the bread dough. I would say the same thing for both of these. Uh, when you think about a cinnamon roll, you think about yeasty leavened dough and it sort of has a yeast you know, feel and flavor to it. Um, that's what's missing here. And I think just a 50 cent packet of just rapid rise yeast, instant yeast would make a great difference in the flavor to either one of these. So there you have it folks. Keto cinnamon rolls, low carb cinnamon rolls. It can be done. This is one of my favorite recipes, honestly, that I've probably done. It is the most convincing bread or baked good dessert recipe that I have ever done on this channel. I am honestly shocked. It's gonna be a hard row to hoe tomorrow not to eat every single one of these things. So, whew, all right. Uh, as I say every time, guys, uh, these videos are a way for me to maintain my low-carb way of eating. And looking in the end of that camera every week or two or three or as soon as I can get to you, it does help keep me honest. So I appreciate that you are coming along for the journey. Um, if you're new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button. We, this is what we do. We pit recipes against one another and find out the winner. Sometimes we even make our own. Um, so if that interests you, hit subscribe. If you're already a subscriber, be sure you hit the bell button down below, the little picture of a bell. Uh, YouTube is fickle about letting people know who uh, releases new videos. 
If you hit the bell button, uh, notification button, you hopefully will should be notified as soon as I release a new video. Uh, be sure to check out my Patreon account. If you don't know what Patreon is, I've always said it's like the, the tip jar for the internet. It allows people like you who enjoy what people like me do here on YouTube, and you can give us a dollar or two a month just to sort of keep the train on the tracks. But what you don't know, and what I've just added, is a lot of exclusive content just for my Patreon members. Now, it's nothing, you know, uh, monumental, but it is a lot of behind the scenes footage, blooper reels, uh, cuts uh, that I make that wind up on the cutting room floor that don't make it into the final video. You've got printed um, PDFs of all of my original recipes, Q&A sessions, lots of stuff like that. So be sure to check me out at patreon.com. Uh, I'll leave a link here on the screen and as well uh, down below. So otherwise, yeah, guys, thank you for joining me. Um, I'll see you back here in the next week or two, uh, and we'll do another one of these recipe battles. So stay tuned. I love you guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.